Hey, hello and welcome back to another part in my series of videos where I'm going to help you understand just how much NAS devices cost you in electricity and ultimately how much in the old Wonga down the line. And today we are looking at this. This is the Synology RS422, an AMD embedded Ryzen powered 4 bay rack mount solution. In today's video, I'm going to work out how much this system running four drives of Synology's own HAT5300 16TB drives in a RAID 5 environment is going to cost you in terms of electricity and again in terms of power. This is their own drives there. I know the lighting doesn't really want to play the game. We've got four of these installed inside this system and what we're going to be doing today is running 24 hours of this system running those drives in full access and then we're going to run 24 hours of these drives in idle. Now, what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? Well, if you've watched my other videos, skip ahead a few minutes, but other than that, if you're new to this, stay with me a little bit longer. So, when a NAS is in operation, there is that difference between active and idle use. Unless you are a higher end business user, there's a very high possibility you are not utilizing this system solidly for 24 hours. Indeed, you're probably not using it to its full power for more than an hour or two every day anyway, probably not even that. And when you are utilizing the system, you're streaming multimedia or you're running surveillance cameras or running backups or a virtual machine or anything like that, then chances are that is when the system is at peak, but you're not doing that 24 seven. Consequently, a lot of people when they're one trying to work out how much these devices are going to cost them in power consumption, don't really have a balance with which to go for. You've got the kind of uh, postulated and provided stats and power consumption from the brands, but even these, these may not be specific to you. So in today's video, this 24 per hour period of active use is as follows. The system will have its RAID completed, and again, that will show on the chart during the power consumption, but we don't count it later on. You'll see that later on. Um, but after that, RAID is completed and initialized and synchronized, then we start that 24 hour test. And in that 24 hour period, the following is going to happen. Number one, we're going to have one virtual machine running in Synology Surveillance uh, Virtual Machine Manager software, I should say, the VM software, VMM. That is going to be a one core, one gig VM running on this system. And this system has two gig of memory by default. We'll also be running Surveillance Station 9 with two rear link IP cameras running connected to the device. And lastly, in the Storage Manager, we're going to have the drives running every hour, running an SMART smart test every hour for that 24 hour period. Now, this is still not representative of heavy, heavy, heavy use, but it is representative of active use where we're not going to let the system go into idle or any kind of standby mode. Now, after that 24 hour period, we will look at the kilowatt consumption of the device. After that, we're going to remove the surveillance software, remove the virtual machine software and delete the scheduled smart tests. And in that 24 hour period, this four bay rack mount is pretty much going to be on idle. In that 24 hour period, we're going to disconnect the LAN cable and just let the system sit and wait. And then we'll have that 24 hour period of access, 24 hour period of idle, and we can look at those numbers to work out how much this system would cost you for each of those two different scenarios per day. We'll be utilizing SUS-IT's website to work out currency based on averages in the UK, in the US, Germany, Australia, and Canada in terms of power consumption and what it will cost you in your wallet. And we've got a full article linked in the description, hopefully in time for this video, specific to both this NAS and our mega thread that's covering lots of different NASs and their power consumption for you to check out. But that's the setup. That is everything we're going to be doing. So what I'm going to do now is get this set up, get the raid done. I'm going to bring you back in about, mm, I think, just under three days from now. And we're going to go through the results together there. Let's fast forward about three days. Okay, so it has been several days. Indeed, it's been nearly four days for me since I originally started this video. And we've got our results, which you can see there on screen. Uh, we've got the RAID that we created there. We've got all the different tools that we're running in the background. We get some idea of the consumption. The RAM took a bit of a kick in. But again, this was just at the end of our testing. As you can see, this is when the system had been up for four days at that point. But by then, we'd already started removing it from the power connecting monitor. And we can see there that although it 
bridged over October and September between the build uh, and the build taking quite a long time it should be said because they were quite large drives and the completion of the tests we can see that the overall results there during it were uh, 0 0.52 kilowatt uh, during the initialization of that first day and then into the second day uh, 0 0.86 and finally 0 0.33 during the idle so 0 0.86 for this NAS, which for a rack mount, before we go any further, I will say straight away, that is an impressive statistic there for a rack mount device there. Generally, when it comes to rack mounts, they are hungry, hungry beasts. And for me, this rack mount obviously is a four by one U compact, small fan, um, open PSU as well internally. It's not a block internally. And of course, that dual core CPU being a lot more efficient and two gig of soldered on board memory. Um, it is still a little high because of the drives that we used, which are a little bit more aggressive in their stature. But still, this is definitely a more efficient powered device and definitely maintains a lot of the things that Synology said about its architecture there. But what we want to look at now is that 0 0.86 and that 0 0.33 kilowatts there. That's going to be really, really important. So let's snap that to the side there. And what we're going to do is slowly but surely make our way through those results. And again, just like we did in our previous video, we are looking at uh, the utilization and we're looking at it in different currencies. And there is a whole article linked to the description that I'll show you later on where I've already correlated a lot of the results. But for now, what we're going to need is our calculator there on screen for this rack mount. And the first thing we're going to look at is is that 0 0.86 kilowatts uh, during active use with those cameras and uh, the VM, that low-end VM that we were running with one of the cores there. But for now, what we're going to do is go ahead and take that 0 0.86. Uh, we're going to divide that by the 24-hour period. And we're going to take that number. We're going to take it up to the decimal place there of 3. So we're going to copy that down there for us and slowly make our way into all of these stats. So again, we're going with that figure there. And we want that figure per hour so it's working out there for us again we can go with that work out per hour and just move along into our statistics there for each of the different areas as we make our way along get our pricing there for that hour figure and finally the last one there at the end there and this is the canadian average and again before we go any further, I will highlight again, just like I have in my other power videos, it's very hard to find a middle ground when it comes to people's tariffs because different energy providers globally, there are hundreds if not thousands, and the result is it makes it very, very difficult for us to pin down a precise tariff. That's why we're using SUSIT because it has averages. Now, again, some regions like Canada, as you can see there, is averaging uh, different tariffs in 2020. That is the most up-to-date they have. Whereas when we look at the UK, we can see that it's actually a lot more recent. So again, these are by no means an exact science, but bear in mind that this should give you some idea of a general guidance factor of NASs in your different regions. And the other thing I will add, add with the site is you can use their tariff calculator. So if you do have uh, your hourly, daily tariff rates from your energy provider, you can just pop them straight in there and find it out far more precisely based on your own um, uh, agreement with your energy provider there. But we can see there that at the moment in the UK, you'd be paying 1.22 pence an hour uh, to utilize this device during that 24 hours of reasonable act access uh, on the device you can see there on the um, american side of things in the february 2020 tariff that you'd be using 0 0.0053 so again point uh, like half a cent per hour if we make our way next into germany and again germany much like the uk is suffering under something of energy price crisis if you will due to uh, many 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 uh, global factors that we've talked about already in other videos and that is a little over uh, one and a um, one cent uh, euro cent um, uh, 0.14 Next up, we can look at Australia. Again, a relatively recent average there at March 2022. And they're having it at just under 15, uh, 0.15 short of a single cent per um, hour. And finally, uh, the Canadian ones. Bear in mind, again, this is an average from 2020, but they've got it rated at 0 0.003. Now, Canada has a lot of um, kind of input coming in from renewable energy sources that a lot of us know about there. They're doing a great job. And even in 2022 stats, they're probably one of the best right now that we do talk about here on the channel. And well done, Canadians. I've said it before. You're doing a great job of managing your energy um, over there. So... We've got those stats. Next thing we want to do is start feeding it into the calculator here because this is something after my other videos, I realized how inefficient it was the way we were presenting this. B 
bit by bit and drop by drop. So I've created just very quickly the energy formula here. And what we can do is take these figures from each of these areas and copy them directly into our uh, calculator there. So immediately, this is the active use. And then next, I'm sorry, that was the Canadian one. My bad. Let's do that properly. And we'll go in for the next one. And that was our Australian one. I know I could fast forward through this, but I don't want you guys to think I'm not doing my job properly. Um, so if we make our way into the next one, we can see there with Australia, it's starting to calculate there for the active use. We will do idle in just a moment. Next, we're going to take advantage and look at the German one. Pop you in there. Next up, we're going to look at um, the US. And again, the US, I know a lot of the audience that watch this video are uh, you guys over there in the US. You'll be very interested to know what an efficient little rack mount like this is capable of. And finally, the UK there, again, suffering something of an absolute kicking when it comes to energy prices at the moment. Um, there is our calculations there. So again, based on 24 hours of full access again running vm a couple of cameras and running smart tests on those drives which again isn't totally realistic but at least it gives us an idea of sustained use on this system with no time to go idle we can see that it would cost us um again 0 0.29 uh pen uh, cost us 29 pence a day it would cost us um, 8.9 pounds a month and right up to 106 pounds a year and again all these are calculated in your own currencies there dollars euros australian dollars dollars and canadian dollars and again there is a full article i'll show you at the end of the video that you don't have to remember all of this it's all on there on screen with all of those numbers and once again canada you absolute heroes there at 26 dollars per year so again that was full active what about if you want to utilize this device you know barely ever what if it's going to spend most of its time in idle and that's true so what we want to do is come back to our little uh, device uh, our little calculations there and we can see that 0 0.33 kilowatt 24 hour usage um during idle no access everything was um disabled or turned off and the LAN connector was disabled it was just a system sitting there waiting to be used so from there we can start entering that number of 0 uh, 0.33 so again let's bring back our calculator there on screen it's all gone a bit um countdown here hasn't it so again 0 0.33 and from there we'll divide that by 24 once again and again that brings us to the figure right there so again, we'll include that point, uh, like uh, 10 thousandths per, per decimal place position there. We'll include that even though it's quite madness. And then from there, once again, we're just going to emulate everything we just did. And again, work out what it would cost for this if it's going to be running idle non-stop for us there. And again, going through each of the regions. And again, I do recommend you check this website out for yourself. Put those all in there. We'll finish up on you Canadians. Uh, and boom, we've got all of those stats there. So again, we're looking at, again, such a fantastically small number there. It's 0.47 of a pence. Um, so less than half a pence uh, every single day there based on that low utilization. A quarter, um, oh sorry, a fifth of a cent for you guys in the US. Again, just shy of half a euro cent uh, for you guys in Germany. Uh, again, about uh, just shy of a third uh, of an Australian cent, uh, I believe it's a dollar cent, I'm not sure what you guys call it, I apologise, and then again, right there at the bottom, 0.12 of an Australian dollar cent thing. You guys are going to have to tell me if you guys use pence or whatever. I've not been over there. Lovely country. I'd like to see it. A lot, a lot of nice things being said about Canada in this video. So again, let's bung all of these stats into our calculator. And this is going to be for that idle usage. And again, I've realized a little typo there. Let's pop you in there. Um, so again, let's start once again with the UK. Let's pop you in there. Let's take that. And again, I know we could fast forward through this, but I don't want you guys to think anything's been changed here while we're doing it. Again, next up, we're going to go for the US. And again, zero. It's such a fantastically small number. That's almost comedic. Um, pop you there. Next up, we'll go for there. You guys there in Germany. Um, go for that there i apologize for not looking at you guys on camera as much as i would like to but i want to make sure I, I don't make any errors while doing this finally we can pop that in there we'll go for this um get, we don't want to include the cent figure because it might break the formula um pop there and final one there canadians at the end as we go boom 
and again pop that in the box and now we can work out what it would cost us if this device was idle so as you can see um a year of idle if it was just there waiting to be used which is a bit weird it would be 41 pounds uh, in the us per year it would work out 17 pounds in germany 38.5 pounds uh, in Australia, 28 pounds and a, a fraction. And finally, uh, just shy, uh, just above, I should say, $10 there in Canada. But again, as mentioned, we're not going to use this device in either full access, most users, or in full idle. What's the point of buying it if it's going to be idle? So the last thing we look at is when we look at that mixed usage. We go down the chart to this chart at the bottom. And what this does is calculate six hours of active use. So this might be when you get home, you get up in the morning, when you're running backups, when you're watching multimedia, uh, those alerts or those cameras that we mentioned, but also 18 hours of idle. This separates that into that um, four quarters, three idle, one utilization factor. And again, all of this has already been calculated thanks to that chart there. And again, as you can see in the UK, if you had that demographic of the device one quarter of the time being utilized, it works out £57 and again £4.70 a month or 16 pence per day. Um, in the US, £24.74. In Germany, £50.87 per year, uh, 39 63 Australian dollars per year. And finally, you guys, Canada, at the end, apparently, who I'm in totally in love with, apparently, is £14.45 pence there. So, again... I'm really impressed by the efficiency of this laptop because I know it's a small little uh, 1U4 bay and that CPU isn't going to blow everyone away, but it still was able to run those cameras. It was still able to run that VM and it's still, you know, the utilization never really crept too high above 50%, obviously because we used the CPU, but we assigned one of the cores or two virtual threads, uh, virtual CPU threads. That was still pushing up by 50% in CPU utilization, but memory utilization, that two gig only occasionally dropped to, uh, you know, dropped beyond, you know, beyond the 50, 60% there, other than what we assigned to the VM. So I was really, really impressed with that. Now, if you want to learn more about this test and have these stats for yourself to hand, you can head over to this article here. We've already done a breakdown of the, st st the statistics. There may be fractional differences between the test we've seen today and the test over here, but that's largely because the test that we've been conducting, uh, I've been utilizing here, I've included all the decimal places, whereas the results I've done here, I have tended to remove the odd couple of 10,000th uh, decimal places in some cases. You will see odd small differences in the overall calculations there, but nothing too extreme. Overall, if you do want to learn more about the utilization power of this device, you can find out more in that article. Also alongside this, it's worth highlighting once again, this was running on Synology's own hard drive, one of the, rec uh, the recommended drives for this testing spectrum. This is their own drives, which did do a very good job. And I do detail in that article and more information about what those drives are actually capable of. So I recommend you check that out. Other than that, head over to the full Megathread article where each one of these NASs I'm testing, I'm going to try to do about 20 before the end of the year. And I'm going to add all of them one by one with all of their configurations into this document with different combinations of popular NAS and popular drive as we go through each of them one by one and analyze their test results. And again, we'll try to make a video for each of them. If you do have a recommendation for a NAS and drive combination that you want to see in this series, do put it in the comments. If I have the hardware or I can get the hardware, I'll run it. Obviously, I can't do every combination in the world and I will prioritize uh, tests where there's multiple votes for the same setup there. If I can find a way to create a voting system, I will. But this has been power testing and how much the old electricity is going to cost you on the energy bill on the Synology IS422 Plus and Synology 16TB hard drives. Do let me know in the comments what you guys think. Click like if you've enjoyed the video because it really helps me understand what I'm doing right or wrong because this is very niche. Even by my standards here on the channel, what I'm doing here is fantastically niche. So the more feedback I get, the better. And if you want to learn more or stay abreast of these tests and other things happening with new data storage technology throughout 2022 and 2023, do subscribe to uh, this channel. Other than that, visit the links I've got in the description for all the tools that I used and the articles that I've directed you to along with Susset, thanks to their website. And other than that, I will see you next time.